Hello everyone, it's Grumpy. Welcome to my first ever Feed the Beast tutorial. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to make solar panels. Now the solar panel recipes have changed, so don't tune out right away. If you're coming from TechIt and you're just going to try Feed the Beast, uh, the recipes are drastically different. So, like here's your basic solar panel. You still use two electronic circuits on the side, a generator, but the glass has been replaced by glass panes and you no longer need coal dust, you need a carbon plate and you need silicone cells. You're also going to need a couple new machines to uh, to get the solar panel production going. First of all, you'll need an industrial centrifuge, and secondly, you'll need a rolling machine. Now, we're going to go. I'm not going to go over everything. It's going to take me an hour to show you how to build all the machinery and all that. But I'm just going to show you what you need to know. Like, uh, you could figure out how to build an industrial centrifuge, but you may not know how to work it and all those quirks and all that thing. Same thing with the rolling machine. But let's go ahead and start with the rolling machine because the rolling machine you will need that to make the industrial centrifuge. So what we'll have to make is an advanced alloy because we'll need advanced machine blocks. These things take uh, two advanced machine blocks to make them. So we'll have to have uh, this advanced alloy. And the recipe for these have changed. It requires a rolling machine now. And the rolling machine requires MJ power. So what we have up here is this hobby steam engine. Uh, you basically put water over here. Let me show you how to do this. There's two ways to do it. One, you can just uh, right click the engine with a bucket of water and that instantly put it in there. And that's the easiest way. That's how I do it. Now, first of all, you'll notice I have all these machines over here require these hobby steam engines, or I, well, that's the kind of engine I'm using anyway. And so I have an infinite water source here, so I can just click any machine to put water in it. But there's a second way to do it. You can open up the center face put the bucket right here and it will empty the bucket and give you your bucket back. Well, let me show you what all these bars are for. This is your water, how much water is in the machine. This is how much MJ stored in the machine. Uh, this right here is the temperature of the machine and this right here is how much steam is in the machine. Honestly, you probably don't need to know any of that. The only one that's useful is the water because it runs out of water. You need to know that. But anyway, here's where you put your fuel. Let's go ahead and put that charcoal in there. Um, yeah, when that char charcoal is going to keep this powered, and uh, when this bar drains, it'll consume a piece of charcoal. But anyway, because it's an engine, you got to have a switch next to it, and that's powering up this rolling machine. This thing also has its own little internal MJ storage, so that's basically enough energy right there to produce one item. But let's go ahead and put some stuff in there and make something. Let's put a couple of everything in there. This is one of the recipes for mixed metal ingots. Alternately, you can also use um, steel in top row. It gives you, I think, three ingots instead of two, but steel, uh, steel you're going to have to have a blast furnace to make it. Basically, you put iron inside of a blast furnace and you'll end up with steel. But anyway, this gives us our mixed metal ingots. And by the way, like I say, once again, this is just an ingredient to make the industrial um, centrifuge. So I'm just showing you that. This, I actually had to watch a video, couple, two or three or four videos to figure out how to do this. So I'm trying to put it all in one video. So this is trying to, you won't have to watch three or four videos like I did. But anyway, let's go over here and look at this industrial uh, centrifuge recipe. Now these solar panels aren't something you're going to build right off. It's more something for the middle game because it's going to require a trip to the nether and all kinds of stuff. But Here's the recipe for the industrial centrifuge. You need two advanced circuits, the top and the bottom. You need two advanced machine blocks on the sides. You'll need refined iron in the corners and an extractor in the middle. Now these advanced machine blocks, that's why we need the advanced alloy. You're also going to need carbon plate. That's not too difficult. You'll just need a lot of coal and you can figure out how to make that. Just keep cooking backwards and it'll tell you. So basically you're going to need four pieces of coal dust. You get those by sticking them in a uh, where is the recipe? There, oh, oh. here it is. Macerator. Put coal in a macerator, and you'll get coal dust. And so, you can figure that all out. So I'm not going to baby step you on how to make this. I'm just going to showing you what you'll need to know. That's not common sense or self-explanatory. So once you get this industrial centrifuge built, like I say, just use the recipe book. This is what the interface looks like. You have a pot, spot in the middle and you have four outputs. Now this thing, what you put in the middle, it's going to spin. It's going to take it five or ten or fifteen minutes to make whatever, depending on what you put in there. But after the time's elapsed, whatever it's making will appear in these corners. And uh, so let's go ahead and make something. We'll take some redstone here. This is actually the recipe 
I use because if we go back and look at these uh, silicone cells, now uh, these silicone cells are seven recipes, but you could pick which you could pick how you want to make them. Like you can use lazurite dust, or you can use soda light. But all seven of these recipes require this industrial centrifuge. So what I use is redstone because that gives me 27 silicone cells. Now here's the other byproducts. These can be used for other things. So I actually have a chest right next to my centrifuges where I keep all the cells and byproducts, different things. But these silicone cells, this is what I need to make the solar panels. So to do this, all you have to do is, is first off, we go back and look at the recipe. Uh, let's find that recipe again. Okay, it tells you need 64 redstone. You know, now, if it tells you need 64, you need to put 64 in there. If you put 63 in there, nothing's going to happen. So whatever it tells you put in the middle, that's what, exactly what you want to put in the middle. You could actually put too much, and it won't matter. It'll just it'll just use what it needs. But for redstone, it actually happens to be an entire stack. But secondly, you're going to need empty cells. So um, this thing won't start producing until you put the empty cells and the redstone in there so I can't believe it's raining oh alright let's turn off this rain it, it does this every time I record now let's go back put it back in recipe mode before I forget okay so what were we talking about oh oh yes yes so we're gonna make make this First of all, I want you to notice if you stick this redstone in there, nothing happens. If you stick the empty cells in there, nothing happens. The instant you stick them both in there, it's going to consume both. So it's going to consume 27 of these cells, and bam, we've got 10 left. And the, those ingredients are gone forever. Now it's going to spin, and it's going to run for, I think it's 10 or 15 minutes, whatever. whatever it tells you with the recipe. If you look at the recipe, it tells you how long it takes. I think it's like 10 or 15 minutes. But anyway you can see these little progress bars on the four arrows as soon as these progress bars fill up it'll cr create these four byproducts and one of the four byproducts was 27 silicone cells now I already happen to have some here and so let's go ahead and make this thing and see what we need we need three glass panes so let me go ahead and get these three glass panes there's three glass panes uh, need a carbon plate. I think I already have that. Yes, I have a carbon plate right there. Uh, I need two silicone cells, two, a generator, and two electronic circuits. So I have two electronic circuits right here. I don't have a generator, but those are not hard to make at all. Just a few seconds, actually. There we go. Now, actually, let me go over here and show you this generator recipe. First of all, there's there's more than one or several recipes. Uh, here's one I that's kind of cool. If you have a bunch of water mills left over, you can put two of them side by side, and you'll end up with a generator. So you kind of recover part of your ingredients. But here's some here's the recipe I like to use. This one down here. Now, if you look right here, you use an iron furnace and three refined iron. That's a grand total of 11 iron. Well, this one down here, it only takes a machine block, which is eight iron. So this recipe down here is cheaper. So that's the one I like to use. So let's go ahead and make that real quick. There we go. And there's our generator. And now I believe we have everything we need. So if we put our glass on the top. And we'll put our silicone cells on the side. Carbon plate in the middle. Then our generator. Then our two electronic circuits. And there we go. We get a solar panel. Now, here's something that varies if you're used to the other old way of making solar panels. You don't have to make an LV array, it just takes eight of these. To make a medium, it takes eight of these. Well, it's not that way anymore. To make the next level up, you only need to consume the original. So, in other words, to make one advanced solar panel, I'm going to have to consume one solar panel. So, let me show you the recipe. You take one solar panel and surround it by this. You'll need two advanced circuits. Uh, advanced machine block, uh, some advanced alloy, and you'll need this irradiated glass pane. That one's a little complicated, but it's not that big of a deal. Basically, it's pretty cool because it gives you something to do with all that uranium you found. If, you, if you're not into nuclear reactors, that stuff was pretty worthless. Now it actually has uses. You can, so you can see you build this irradiated uranium to make that. 
you take refined uranium, surround it by glowstone, and the refined uranium, you basically take uranium ore and you compress it and you get refined uranium. So, in other words, this uranium has a purpose now. If you're not into nuclear power, you can use it to make solar panels. I love this Greg Tech. I love how complicated the solar panels are. It, it's made the game fun again and new again. So, at first I was reluctant to switch to Feed the Beast just because Red Power 2 and Equivalent Exchange are missing. I really miss Red Power 2, but I'm enjoying this game more than Tekka. So, if, if you're still playing Tekka, I definitely recommend switching to Feed the Beast. They're going to add those two mods eventually anyway. They're just uh, updating them right now or getting the code ready or whatever. But anyway, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I hope I didn't leave anything out. I didn't want to make this a two-hour video where I'm showing you how to build every last little thing. I just went over um, what was new over um, Tekkit. So you need a rolling machine now and you need this industrial centrifuge. Let me cover this industrial centrifuge a little bit more first. Now, first of all, they run off low power, low voltage. So don't power them up with an MFSU or an MFE. You'll run, a, run them off a battery box or a LV transformer. That's actually how I'm doing it. My machines over here, they all have transformer upgrades, so they're running off medium voltage. So they're running straight off these MFEs. But if you look right here, I have a low voltage transformer. So these things are running off low voltage. That's also why I can use the copper wire. Copper wire is only for low voltage. But anyway, you can see here's the LV transformer. The three dots are facing towards the high voltage. Let me show you how much power these machines use. It's not much at all. 5 EU per tick, so it's not very much at all. But um, a generator puts out 10 EU, so in theory you could run uh, two of these uh, centrifuges off one generator. Now, you can't overclock these things or anything like that. If you look at it, there's no other interfaces for it or anything. So basically, if you want more speed, you build more of them. That's kind of how they do it in the real world, too. Like, I know when they're always getting on Iran for trying to build a nuke, they're building all these. you got to have centrifuges. you got to have hundreds of these centrifuges to, to, to make a nuclear bomb or whatever. So centrifuges are just slow machines, even in the real world. But um, you can see I already have three of them. So they're very fun to use. You've got all kinds of recipes for them. They make all kinds of byproducts. You can stick some of these byproducts back into them like this pyrite. This is a byproduct, but you could stick it back in the centrifuge and end up with totally different stuff. And like say some of these cells, you may not want to use them. Like let's see, these sodium cells, you just stick them back in, you stick those in the extractor and it turns them back into empty cells. So you can recover your cells. So this process kind of screams to be automated. It's kind of cool, but I'm having fun just playing with it. Anyway, sorry, sorry to babble. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of them, please give this video a like because if a video gets a lot of likes, I know I need to make more videos of that type. But anyway, it's Grumpy. We will see you next time, and I appreciate you watching and liking, comment, subscribing, and all that kind of stuff.